Hello everyone. I am Manali Reshamwala, Assistant Professor from LG Institute of Physiotherapy. Today I am going to discuss about superficial venous thrombosis. It is a part of syllables for physiotherapy in cardiopulmonary conditions for final year physiotherapy students of Gujarat University. Before we understand the disease in detail, we need to remind or revise the basic structure of the venous system. The structure of the venous system is divided into two, superficial veins and deep veins. Superficial veins lies beneath the skin while deep vein lies beneath the fascia. Today I am going to discuss superficial venous structure in detail. Superficial veins of upper limb are syphilic vein and basilic vein. Syphilic vein begins with the dorsal medial marginal arteries of the hand from where laterally it starts and laterally it moves upward in the forearm, crosses the elbow joint, laterally on the arm, then it pierces deep into clavipectoral fascia and ends in the axillary vein. Basilic vein begins from the medial aspect of the hand. From here it passes medially over the forearm, then crosses the elbow joint. In middle of the arm, medially it enters deeply where it ends in the axillary vein. Superficial vein of the lower limb are namely great syphilis vein and short syphilis vein. Great syphilis vein is the longest vein of the body. It begins with the medial marginal veins of the foot. From here it goes upward behind the medial malleolus, medially on the thigh, medial side of the knee joint and enters into syphilis opening, ends in the femoral vein in the femoral triangle. Short syphilis vein begins from the lateral marginal vein of the foot from which up behind the lateral malleolus it moves upward laterally on the leg, ends into the popliteal vein in the popliteal fossa. These superficial veins mainly drain blood from the skin. The wall of the superficial vein contains smooth muscle and they are controlled by ANS that is autonomic nervous system. Thus it plays very important role in temperature regulation. The, the function of superficial vein is of temperature regulation. It constricts the vein to conserve the heat and dilate to lose the excess body heat. Let's see the superficial venous thrombosis disease in detail. It is one of the vascular, peripheral vascular disease in which inflammation of the inner wall of the superficial veins occur mainly of the lower limb. Here are the points which we are going to see in detail. First is causes. The trauma to vessel wall by a needle or pressure externally due to tight garments or position of the limb can lead to SVT that is superficial venous thrombosis. Circulating toxins from the septic wound. If person is having septic wound anywhere, the circulating to toxins may irritate the wall of the superficial vein and lead to thrombus formation. There can be also associated with DVT that is deep vein thrombosis. If a person is having deep vein thrombosis, there are more chances of that person to get superficial venous thrombosis also. Next is pathology. Any kind of irritation causes changes in the tunica intima which leads to thrombus formation. The difference of superficial venous thrombosis and deep venous thrombosis is that the thrombus usually becomes attached to the vein wall and rarely produces embolus. Yes, there is less pressure inside the superficial vein than that of the deep vein. 
Next are the clinical features which we can see the person is suffering from superficial venous thrombosis. Thing is, first thing is localized reddened warm area. We may see these kind of red area around the site of location. Hard cord like swelling along the course of affected superficial vein like this. Pain at the rest aggravated by movement of the limb and skin changes. Pigmented brown along the course of the vein can be seen. Diagnosis of superficial venous thrombosis can sometimes be done by phlebography but usually the clinical features are the main diagnostic thing which may help us clinically diagnose superficial venous thrombosis. So the treatment of these can be the advice the pa to the patient to use firm elastic bandaging or stockings from toes to beyond the upper limit of the affected area which will keep the blood flow towards the heart more effective. Drug therapy in may include antibiotics if there is an infective phlebitis, an analgesics for pain relief, an anti-inflammatory like endomethacin to reduce the inflammation. Physiotherapy has a little role but we can advise the patient to do foot exercises with leg elevation. We can advise the patient to remain ambulant to maintain venous circulation. In severe cases, we can allow bed rest for shorter period of time followed by exercises. Here are the references. Thank you.